If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer, with more news, views and interviews on the vacation rental or short term rental industry. Have you noticed that, uh, you know, we I'm moving more and more from calling it vacation rentals to short term rentals. And it's been really interesting recently, some discussion that's come up about Airbnb and the fact that Airbnb is now a verb and has, has been for quite some time, of course. And how newcomers to the industry are almost coming in, calling it what what they're doing, their Airbnb. And and it, we were at a show in Toronto back in October. And and at those shows, we're we're there as a property management company. It's a cottage show. It's the most of the attendees are property owners or potential property owners. And and we're there to attract and acquire new owners for uh, you know to, to bring properties into our inventory, and it's we're very successful at doing that. When when we get the face to face with with owners, and we can tell them exactly what we do for them, then it, it's um, it's it's a real bonus in our conversion rates. But I'm I guess a couple of years ago I realised that I'm hearing this more and more about Airbnb, whereas Airbnb just was not a feature in our environment about five years ago. It was, it it just hadn't gone out into cottage country and now it's firmly entrenched. And I had a couple of people come up to me at the show and said, you're Airbnb. And I said, no, we're not. We're Cottage Link Rental Management and we do property management for your cottage rental. So you you do Airbnb then? And I said, well, you know, we don't actually advertise our properties on Airbnb because it's the, the the type of service we offer, which involves a lot of screening, is not a good fit for advertising on Airbnb. And and that just didn't deter them at all. It's it's just I got into this discussion on a Facebook group uh, on a Facebook post. You know, it was by Matt Landau, and he was he was sort of addressing this this topic. In, in the Facebook posts, and I, I recalled back in England in the, well, it was fifth, I wouldn't recall it in the 50s, I, I'm not that old, but 60s and 70s, uh, um, we had vacuum cleaners ma- manufactured by Hoover, and we used the verb to Hoover, still do. I'm going to Hoover up the car, I'm going to Hoover the carpet. And, you know, it, it became just part of the vernacular uh, in the same way, and I, I don't think it hit the US as it did in, in, the, in England. But in the same way that you refer to Kleenex uh, for paper tissues and uh, Thai Anmar Sink um, jumped in and said, yeah, and then, then you have Kodak moments. Well, we used to have Kodak moments. I don't I think we have more Instagram moments now. But it, it, it was really interesting how this branding has really, really taken off. Anyhow, this, you know, it's a really interesting uh, discussion to have. Can disruption take this away? Eventually in England, uh, the Dyson came along and disrupted the market for the conventional vacuum cleaner a la Hoover. We've always had Dysons since they were since they started manufacturing them, but we've never ever said we Dysoned a carpet or we're just going to go and spend half an hour Dysoning. But we tend not to use the word Hoover anymore. It's it's, it's gone out of out of our vocabulary. Maybe that will happen with Airbnb, but I somewhat doubt it unless there is such a major disruptor. However, on the topic of um, of Airbnb and OTAs, we're going to be turning our thoughts very shortly as we come into the new year on to direct booking. Amy Hynote, who uh, spearheaded the 2018 direct booking campaign, is already working on the 2019 event, which will be a one-day direct booking event. And I don't have the statistics to hand. I will have to dig them out and put them in the show notes because that one day event reached so many people. I will be discussing with Amy shortly about what her goals are for the 2019 Book Direct Day because I know she's really going to want to smash those records. Dare I say double those statistics? We shall see. 
we shall see. I'll ask Amy and I'll get back to you as and when we, we the, the plans go forward for Book Direct 19. As part of Booking Direct, you need to have a website. Th- that is a given. And on that website, you need to have content. That's also a given. Otherwise, you're just another page listing a property. The only way to get people to visit your website, to attract the traffic that you need, is to deliver the sort of content that's going to make them see you as the expert in your location, the go-to source for any information they want in the place they're going to visit. Now, you will recall I've talked to uh, Alan Egan on numerous occasions about this, and Alan has been a stalwart of Booking Direct for as long as I can remember. He took this to the next stage when he launched Vacation Soup a couple of years ago. And I last talked to Alan about a year ago, and I wanted to bring him back sort of as a prelude to the Book Direct day in February and and find out how Vacation Soup is going, what the future is for content creation and content management, and get some examples on how people are doing it and how they're doing it really, really successfully. So without further ado, let's uh, jump on over to my interview with Alan Egan of Vacation Soup. Well, I'm delighted to have with me again, Alan Egan. I say again, it's been three or four times now, Alan, hasn't it? This is the sixth time. Is it really? Oh, my goodness. It is indeed. Thank you for having me. (laughs) It's always a pleasure. And I should actually put, um, put all six of those onto the show notes This is going to be episode 265, I think, when it goes out. Wow. That's about right. That's about right. So just a pleasure to have you you back with us again. And and I was just saying in the introduction that we've, you know, we've talked about Vacation Soup before. I mean, in the past, I'm thinking back back on things we've talked about. We talked about Google Plus quite a lot. And I think Google Plus is is now gone. Uh, Yeah, well... It's still there, but I don't think you can post anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about Google Plus and then you started doing the WordPress websites and for a long time giving away all your instruction on creating websites, which I know for some people was the most invaluable, just just great resource for helping them get off and off and running. And then, of course, along came um, Vacation Soup. So I've got a lot of new listeners. Let's just recap what Vacation Soup actually is. Uh, Vacation Soup is we're giving away websites, the WordPress websites that are destination based uh, with a video course. And we're giving away a WordPress plugin that helps you create content. And Vacation Soup connects all of the websites together and publishes the content in one place. Uh, and so we leverage the exposure of having a lot more posts than if you just post on your own. And that's it in a nutshell. That is a great nutshell. And I know when you started out, I, was, I had a little bit of a challenge to get my head around what it was actually doing. But now, now that the vacationsoup.com website is a really comprehensive website... Tell me what's happened over the past sort of six or eight months or so. What improvements have you made? What what enhancements are there for people who register? Well, we were, when we first uh, launched, we were WordPress only. So you could only join the soup if you had a WordPress website. And obviously that was a bit limiting. Uh, so now you can post directly from the soup. So you could uh, write articles uh, through our interface uh, so people with Wix, Weebly, and other websites uh, can write their blog posts, hit publish, and it will appear in the soup and on their own website via an RSS feed. Um, so we've opened up the platform to more people. Uh, we've also introduced geotagging, which are, is really exciting. Blog posts historically, or blogs in general are historically, are quite difficult to navigate because they're date sorted. So if I wrote a great post a year ago, it's actually quite hard to find. Um, And what we've done is introduced geotagging. So if I write about a local restaurant, I can put the 
latitude and longitude of that restaurant as part of the post, and it will appear on a map. So all my recommendations now are map-based. So I live on a relatively small island, but this works really well. If I'm in the south of the island, I can pull up the map and I can see the recommendations that are nearby to me uh, instead of wading through uh, a blog. Uh, I, th I think we're the only company doing that anywhere in any market, actually. Um, I'm surprised it hasn't been done before. Uh, but that's really huge because up until now, the content marketing aspect has really been to, to drive traffic into the website. Uh, and once we've got uh, fee-paying guests, we don't really have much to do with them. Whereas now, we're actually acting as a, an online concierge where our fee-paying guests can actually plan their day around where they are. Um, so that's really exciting. I expect more companies will copy that, but we are the first to do that. Yeah, I, I, I love it because, um, you know, when I, when I was doing my sort of research before I, I spoke to you, I, I picked out a couple of places that I know quite well, places that I've been to on numerous occasions. So I picked and, and I thought, well, I'll go in and have a look and see what's, what's there. If I was actually, let's say I was looking for Exuma in the Bahamas, which is a favorite place of mine, and I put in Exuma in, your, in, 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 the, in the search box, the destination search box, and it was great. And it came up with just under a dozen articles, mostly written by Don and Gail from Harbour View in Exuma. Now, I've actually stayed at their place twice. Oh, uh, wow. Small um, world. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, the, the, the property, that uh, the, the land that we bought, which we just actually sold, but the land that we bought was right, right in front of their house. So, it, you know, when, when we went out there and did our purchasing, we stayed, stayed at their place. So I, I was so delighted to see that, that Don has this, this place now to put all his wonderful knowledge on Exuma. So if I was planning an Exuma trip, this would be a great spot to go and actually find this, um, this information. And then I can see on the right-hand side is, is the listing of their property in Exuma. And then there's other properties there as well. So ju just describe to me how this is actually working. What are you hearing from owners who are developing this content? How is it working for them? Well, it's for those that have embraced it uh, the most, it's working you know, far beyond their expectation. I think you know Terry and Sandy yep. from uh, Anna Maria Island. They, they write very regularly and they produce great content. Uh, they're fully booked. I think they're called Anna Maria Island Condo Rentals dot com. And uh, Laurie in Maui, she's writing a lot. Uh, she's fully booked, as far as I know. Uh, and she doesn't list on any listing sites whatsoever. She came across uh, the free website giveaway uh, in its early days, um, and took the took to blogging like um, to horse to water, if that's the right term. And so she started writing a lot of content, uh, and she's getting enough bookings that she's not with any listing sites. In fact, she doesn't call herself. She wrote to me saying um, she doesn't call herself a vacation rental owner anymore. She calls herself a travel blogger, and that's quite a leap. Uh, but that shows the power of what we're doing. Um, you know, nobody, as I said to you, probably in the very first podcast we had, nobody goes on vacation rental. No one. No one has ever gone on vacation rental. People go on vacation. And if you only market the rental, you're actually taking a very small subset of people's vacations. So if you open up your thinking to talking about vacations, you can talk about so much more and not be a property bore. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of property bores out there. You know, it's not like um, there's a, a shortage of those. It's impossible to stand out if you only talk about your property. It's an interesting thing because this message, I'm sure it is getting across, but there's so many times I'll, I'll go onto Twitter and, and I've been talking a, about Twitter to a lot of people and saying, stop talking about your property. No, yeah. Nobody wants to hear about your property. They want to hear about the whale watching. They want to hear about the, the, the best breakfast on the planet in the local restaurant. 
but that message is still, you know, it's still tough to get that one out because people are so focused on getting traffic to them, their listing or to their website that they forget or, or, the, or the, they, they just don't want to go there and think that they can do that by any other means than talking about their place. It's almost impossible to get traffic to your website if you only talk about your book. There are 12 million listings on tripping.com alone, and they don't even list Airbnb properties. So you probably take a bit of a stab at somewhere between 17 and 20 million competing properties. So if you only talk about your property, you can't possibly hope to get uh, any traffic to your website. It's never going to happen. Google's a bit like a librarian, and websites are a bit like books. And when a new book comes into the library, Google reads it. But it's quite busy reading all these books. And if you don't add to your book, it won't ever read it again. But when you publish a blog post of any size, it pings Google and Google comes back to your website and reads it. And the more often that you publish, the more often Google comes and reads your website. And just by doing that alone, you start to gain authority because if you and I have the identical properties next to each other, and I'm adding content to my website and you're not, I will get more traffic than you. You won't get any traffic, really, uh, unless you have some bizarre luck. Or you've, you might get some if uh, you call your property something really different and that word gets out about the name of the property. If you're just hoping to get traffic because you've built a property website, it's never going to happen. That, that's well said. And and I just it would be just so so lovely to get this message across to uh, to many many more people particularly those that are focused on booking direct so so let's move on and talk about i mean you, you, we've talked about don and gail amesbury we've talked about terry white uh, and sandy in anna maria island they're doing a fabulous job on creating these articles and then there's Laurie in uh, in Maui doing the same thing. But if somebody's listening, that they're probably thinking, well, you know, I I don't write. I'm I have it's a real struggle. It's a challenge. What sort of content should I be producing? Do you have any tips on how they go about starting off this bucket of content? Well, first of all, we have two or three clients to think about when it comes to writing content. So. Uh, and the main two really are potential guests and Google or the search bots. Um, and they have different needs. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about the, the potential guests first of all. And you can write fairly short recommendations about that. You know, if I'm recommending a restaurant down the road, it's going to be a fairly short post. Um, I can also update with uh, photographs of maybe an event or, or something. So these are quite short snippets, really, of what's what's on, where, where to eat and drink, that sort of thing. When it comes to feeding Google, Google only ever had one real ambition, and that's to serve up the best content on the web uh, in answer to people's queries. And that's obviously getting harder as there's more content coming into the web. So if you want to rank for really good, strong terms that drive a lot of traffic, uh, then the upshot is that you need to write uh, bigger and better articles than anyone else. And that is quite intimidating uh, until you break that down uh, into what I call listicles. So if I ask you to write a 2,500 word article, your eyes will glaze over and say, well, no way I've got time for that. But if I ask you to list the 25 best things to do in any location, your location where your rental property is, that's quite easy to do. It's only going to take 20 minutes, half an hour over a glass of wine or something. And then if I ask you to write 100 words about each of those things, then we've broken down the writing process into little bite-sized pieces. And what I suggest people do is, first of all, it's habit. It's successful content marketing needs to be habitual. What I suggest people do is they set aside 10 minutes a day, the same 10 minutes maybe, a morning coffee or over an evening glass of wine just to wind down a little bit and go back to your list of 25 great things and to write 100 words just in 10 minutes. Do that on your smartphone or a tablet or you know, a PC, depending on how you find it easiest to work. 
And by the end of the month, I've got a huge article. Um, and it's these huge articles that will rank. Um, now, I'm talking about going after major terms that have a lot of traffic. There's a middle ground. Um, you can put together uh, articles about your favorite beach or whatever, uh, or about the four best, four or five best attractions in the area, and write one or two hundred words about each of those over a, a period of a week. And you've got a big article as well. If you dress those articles up with images and in particular video, then you can end up with very sticky content. Um, and if you can get people uh, to read these posts, which is not that difficult, there are a lot of Facebook groups specific to areas, and you post, uh, you post these obviously to your website first, and then post links to those in relevant Facebook groups, people start reading these articles. And because they spend a lot of time, because it's a big article, people spend a lot of time reading it. That gives Google the main indicator. You, you can't fake on-page time. Uh, you used to be able to fake all sorts of things with Google, but it's grown up now. And one of, of course, the key indicators is if somebody spends 10 minutes reading an article, that's way better than an article that only gets read on average two minutes, then it will rank higher. So you need to feed the potential guest with short snippets because people don't have that much time, especially if they're checking their phone on a lunch break or whatever, they're not going to read a big article. But big articles are particularly for Google. And if you can rank highly these specific terms, uh, you can get a lot of traffic. Now, I've been running a lot of experiments with this sort of content. Uh, the first one I did was actually for Anna Maria Ryan, because Terry writes a lot for, the, for Vacation Soup. We were rewarding the people that wrote the most. So I took Terry's 25 most popular articles and summarized them, rewrote the 25 best things to do in Anna Maria Ryan. And I took his 25 best posts and rewrote um, a paragraph for each, added video to nearly all of those. And I think that's ranking third or fourth in Google now for things to do in Anne Maria Island. That term gets around 4,000 searches a month. That's still going up in the ranking. Uh, the top two positions are held by TripAdvisor, so I'm quite interested to see whether we can overtake TripAdvisor, which will really be something. Those, this type of article, article is called a skyscraper. The term was coined by Brian Dean of Backlinko. He's uh, very big in the SEO and link building sector, which is fiercely competitive. And yeah, I, I, basically, <clears throat> you've probably heard the term content is king. So I started thinking about, well, what's the king of content? And you can do this for any subject if you search the subject itself. So. For example, if, if you want to write an article, supposing you've got a place in Florida Keys and you search in Google things to do in the Florida Keys, Google already serves up the top 10 posts that it thinks are the best answer to that question. And if you look at those 10 posts and then make something better, the chances are you will rank higher than those posts. It's that simple, although of course it is work. Um, but anything in this industry is work. But that's the general the general idea, is just create better content than anyone else. Uh, that, that's on the Google side, and that will bring you traffic. And there's a simple equation, the more traffic you get to your website, the more bookings you'll get. You know, the conversion rate will, in fact, go up the more uh, content that you add to your website. You mentioned a couple of things I just want to come back on. Just first of all, just just tell tell us what you mean by sticky content. Now, sticky is uh, where someone comes to a page on the web and they stay on that page. If everything comes down to timings, really, in, the, in its most basic sense, um, if, I, if, I, if the average time on a page is uh, 30 seconds, that's not a very sticky page. Uh, I've got some pages that I've built specifically for the soup where the average time on site is 15 minutes. And obviously... That's an age in internet terms. Uh, so Google sees that as that, that particular article is answering people's questions. If people have uh, searched for what to do on Anna Maria Island and someone is spending 10 minutes on that page, once they've searched it, that's obviously providing the answers that they needed. Yeah, so, so they're just going to stick around. That, that's where the sticky yeah. comes from. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. So you've also talked about ranking. So, so that's ranking for keywords, key phrases. How do you find out what, I mean, how, how do you integrate 
the keywords and key phrases into your content and how do you find them at the outset? How are you finding what people are looking for? Yeah, well, that's a very good question. If you, let's take Exuma as an, uh, as an example. If you have a property on Exuma, but this, this goes for anywhere, type into, just go to Google and type into Google Exuma and a space. And Google will drop down the 10 most searched terms for Exuma. There, there's no keyword analysis needed. Google actually give you the hints here, the 10 most search terms. And then if you type in Exuma space A, it will give you the 10 most search terms for Exuma and anything else that starts with A. And you can do that through the alphabet. Now, obviously, that gets a bit tedious. Uh, but there is, in fact, a website called, I kid you not, Keyword Shitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, and all you do is go on, it's a very basic website. You just go on there, and in this case, you would type in Exuma, and it does that process for you through A to Z. So it gives you, within no time, um, hundreds of keywords for any particular place. And you can save that to a text document, and then you can go through the list because some things won't be applicable to write about. But they, these are the list that kicks out will be the most searched terms. But some of them, you know, if you search some places, where was I looking at uh, the other day? I might have been looking up. I can't remember, but there was there were different locations with the same name. So some of those places were in Florida, but I wasn't actually looking for Florida. So not all of the search terms in the list will be uh, relevant. Oh, in fact, I was looking at Antigua as well. And there were things like Antigua cigars and so on. Well, I'm not even sure if they're made in Antigua and wouldn't necessarily be writing about those. But, well, there are plenty of keyword tools, uh, most of which are paid for. I think one's called Word Checker or Word Tracker. And there's a free 14-day trial, I think. Uh, and they have the search volume and the keyword difficulty which are also two things to bear in mind. Could, could you elaborate but, on that, on, the, on those two but, terms? Um, the, the first is how many terms, the search, uh, how many times the term is searched for a month. Uh, and obviously, the higher that is, the better, but the higher it is, the more competition there is. Um, so some keywords, if you look, I use SEM Rush, but that's quite expensive. Uh, but some, most of these keyword analysis tools will give you a list of keywords, the monthly search data, and the keyword competitiveness. And it's quite often possible to find terms that are searched for quite often that aren't very competitive. So we were doing some stuff with a client who's got places in Phuket in Thailand, um, and I did some keyword research, and I found that Phuket pronunciation and how to pronounce Phuket were searched for about 1,700 times a month that only had a handful of competitive pages like um, you know, in, in the tens of thousands as opposed to millions. So I wrote a really quick article uh, of about 500 words of how to pronounce Phuket. Uh, I included a video. Now, obviously, I included some other Thai pronunciations and so on in order to get up to about 500 words. Two days later, I was on page one for that term, and that term gets 1,700 searches a month. So you can drive a lot of traffic through quite a, a little bit of work. Mm -hmm. uh, now, when you're, you know, when I was doing stuff with Terry for Anna Maria Island, you know, things to do on Anna Maria Island is one of the heavily searched terms. In fact, things to do anywhere is quite heavily searched term. Um, <clears throat> And that had 35 million pages, but as I say, I think I'm ranking three, third or fourth at the moment for that term. Uh, <clears throat> so you, you need to weigh up. It takes a little bit of getting used to uh, looking through the list. Also, it's quite handy to write about things that you know about or things that interest you. It's easier to write about that than things that don't interest you. Uh, but have a look through the list, identify things that you think you'd like to write about, and then dive into something like uh, Word Tracker or any of the others. Uh, sign up for a 14-day trial and just print off, you know, put in Exuma in this case, and it will, it will give you a list. You can print that out, and then you can cancel the trial, and you've got enough uh, mm -hmm. data to write for, well, probably a year. Oh, that's excellent. Those are excellent tips. I use key, I use um, keywords everywhere. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's a Chrome extension. I, I just 
like that because if I, I mean, I've just put in Muskoka, which is where I live, Muskoka Attractions. It's come up on the right-hand side with related keywords and, you know, one of them is things to do in Muskoka this weekend. Right, yeah. Well, we're quite interested in bringing people up to, to Muskoka for weekends, particularly in the low season in the winter, and we know it's, it's a last-minute market. So if we do an article that says things to do in Muskoka this weekend, then, you know, maybe that is going to to rank and we'll we'll pull in some traffic on that one. Do you have the other suggestions with things to do in Muskoka in winter? And as I'm sitting here looking out at a complete winter wonderland, <laughs> it's on my mind. If I was staying here, of course, what am I going to, what would I be doing in winter? It just delivers all those all those ideas. Then I put things to uh, I put in things to do in Muskoka in winter and it, it comes up with a lot of other suggestions as well. So in fact, interesting, very, very interesting. I've just seen things to do in Muskoka in winter and the first, the, the right up at the top in, in the, in the little box, I don't know what you call that when it, uh, you know, obviously it, it, you know, it comes before everything else. Top 10 winter activities in Muskoka and it's written by, by Jane at Jane's Cottages. Uh, Jane's pretty good, huh? And she's <laughs> pretty sharp, yes. Yeah, she's very sharp. Yeah, that was very interesting to actually see that the top 10 winter activities in Muskoka is written by the owner of a relatively, you know, moderately small to moderately sized property management company in this area. And the next one down is Discover Muskoka, which is our big tourism agency. And, uh, and they're not hitting the top, Jane is. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason for that is because you know, obviously the, the tourist authority have authority. Uh, they've no doubt been around a long time and no doubt have put out a lot of content. But on a, on a post-to-post basis, you can overtake them by looking at what they've done for that particular article and in, in your case, looking at what Jane's put together and build something better. Now, th- these articles, when they're, when they're big like this and answering major queries, they don't rank overnight like uh, long-tail keywords. They, they can take um, three months or more to surface. Uh, Google is looking at the on-page time and other factors. It's not just going to overnight go, this is a great article and slap it num- number one. But of course, you know, it's not high season for most people now. Uh, they can write articles uh, through low season and, and build a, a bed of content that will bring them traffic when the high season comes around or when booking season comes around. It's more of a long game in, with these types of posts. But it does show you there that, you know, Jane knows what she's doing mm-hmm. and she's outranking the local tourism authority. Yeah, yeah. And, and as I say, if you were to spend some time uh, looking at her articles and anything else on page one, and working out or having a look at what how they've structured the posts, um, what they've written, and set out you know, to write something better, or to outline a post and get it outsourced. You know, there are a ton of outsourcing options out there for writers, some of which are really very reasonable. You can start to really get a lot of traffic to your website. And if somebody is searching what to do in so during the winter, they're showing intent in visiting the area. You know, that not everybody will stay with you, but that's the nature of the beast. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can get traffic, the more traffic you get, the more bookings you'll get. There's a direct correlation there. Yeah, so, uh, you know, tra- traffic is the key. And you, you said something very interesting there. You said, you know, people might not book. They might not book with you, but they are on your site and they're going, to, if, if they love the content, they're then going to start sharing it with other people. You and know, And that improves your ranking as well. Yeah. A yeah. good content, the more it gets shared, the more links that you have incoming then, and that's another signal for Google. So the whole thing builds and builds and builds. Uh, <clears throat> like I say, it is a bit of a long game, especially with the skyscraper-type articles. Uh, but it's not too difficult to put 10 minutes aside uh, per day uh, and do 10 minutes worth of work. I mean, uh, if this time, if you did that uh, every day, just five days a week. Then this time next year, you have 12 massive massive articles that could be b- building uh, or bringing a lot of traffic to your website. And not even, like you say, uh, somebody may be looking for an Airbnb, say. And so this time, they may uh, they may have in fact already booked an Airbnb. 
Uh, but they read your what to do in winter. You've planted a small seed in their brain. You know, they might bookmark the site and refer to it when they're actually there. And the next time they book, they might come to you instead of Airbnb, especially if you've got a row over your website that you're up to 25% cheaper than Airbnb. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm going to mention this because I, I, I probably have mentioned, I mean, maybe I am, maybe I'm the reason that eleutherabahamas.org, uh, sorry, is it eleutherabahamas.org? Hold on a second. No, discover-eleuthera-bahamas.com is on the top of so many pages describing beaches of Eleuthera because I've mentioned it a gazillion times. When we went to Eleuthera years ago looking for, and, and I'd never been there, and I was looking for the, the types of things we could do, and one of them obviously is beaches, and I typed in beaches of Eleuthera, and this site came up. And if, if I, I'll put a link to it, as I do regularly, because it's such a fabulous example of how this thing works. You'll see that um, discovereleutherabahamas.com is, is not, it's, it's a site sell site. It, it's not the best site in the world. No. But it's up there on page one in just about every query about Eleuthera and beaches. And, and I went there years ago and I found not only information on beaches, but I found information on restaurants. I found information on stores and opening times. And it was my go-to guide for going to Eleuthera. And, and it told me absolutely everything I needed about the island. Now, the person who built this site has one property. And I think you know, it, is on, it is on his site. And there's a couple of others on there. And we didn't stay in his place. But as I say, I have mentioned it so many times to people. I have shared the site and and just said, if you're going to Eleuthera, this is the guide. There is no other guide. And that's how it works, isn't it? Absolutely. That's the whole thing with building brand. It's, it's putting out lots of touch points, as many touch points as you can, uh, that can build over time into a memorable experience of, of a website. That, that's the whole purpose of, you can't brand a property. It's impossible if you just market a property, as we said at the beginning, you know, there's, the, you, you can't have a brand, no matter how lovely your website is, if, if all it does is talk about the property. You know, you can look at the biggest brands in the world, like you know, Coca-Cola and so on, um, Disney, for example, they're posting every day even though they're huge brands, they're still keeping pumping out information, posts, photographs, deals, all sorts of stuff, you know, because the building a brand never stops. But it certainly needs to start in our industry. Most people, uh, well, they have no brand, period. Yeah. They, they have a website that's little more than a, than a business card, shows a few photographs and a description, and has a list of rates. The web's moved on. Back in the day, that's pretty much all we could do. Websites loaded slowly. Images were horrendous if you tried to add too many. Yeah, I'm sure you remember what that was like. Now, well, these days, you know, people have grown up with smartphones. Even millennials are 35 years old now. We're in a different world, and people expect more from their experience from start to finish. And certainly if you start their experience off as being top-notch by sharing your information, tips. It might be tiny little things. Like I said, it doesn't all have to be these big skyscraper articles that I'm talking about. Um, short review of a restaurant that you visited, your favourite baker, this sort of thing. is still immensely useful uh, to a visitor. Mm -hmm. you know, in Barcelona a couple of years ago, at an event, I'm not sure if you were there, and Paola recommended a restaurant. But I would have got in a cab and driven down get driven to that restaurant because she recommended it but, but i could have walked to 50 restaurants within 500 meters mm -hmm. the personal recommendations of gold that's really you know that the industry if you if you after this if you search in you know, google for the future of the travel industry all of the top articles about personalization every single one of them and yet we're doing business with companies that don't allow us to be personal so we have to take that that horse by the reins and uh, ride it ourselves and, and personal recommendations and telling your own story, you know, why you bought your property, where you bought it, maybe you travelled there as a kid, maybe your family had ties with the area, all sorts of reasons, you know, get, get your own personal story across as well as 
your personal recommendations, people would rather do business with people than with businesses. Uh, the more personal you can be, the more successful you'll be coming up in the future. Yeah, it's, in, it's interesting you say that about personalization because I've sort of been tagging articles on Evernote recently, all the ones that, that mention all this, you know, from Skift or Tnews and and stuff that was coming out of World Travel Market where they were, they were all talking, as you say, all talking about how, how, how important personalization is. And yeah, really interesting stuff. Um, hey, Alan, if somebody's listening to this and thinks, okay, you know, I'm really fully motivated, I'm going to do this now. What's the what's the first thing they need to do? Well, commit to themselves, really. It's um, more than happy for them to get in contact with me. I'll help them all I can. But the, the first and most difficult stage is committing to producing content on a regular basis. And like I say, with the 10-minute marketing method that I've mm. I have, I am to write, write a list of 5, 10, 20, 25 things to see and do, places to visit, the, the list goes on. No, start small, but commit to making a coffee at 10 o'clock every morning and spending those 10 minutes while you drink the coffee just writing a paragraph about one of those things on one of those lists. And at the end of the week or the month, you'll have something to publish. And dress those articles up, as I say, with good quality photographs using something like Unsplash or Pixabay. They're all copyright-free images, good quality, pretty much images of the entire world. Uh, go on to YouTube. Uh, if you're writing about a place to go horse riding, almost certainly that those stables have got a video somewhere on YouTube. That goes for pretty much any attraction in the world is has some sort of YouTube presence. If it hasn't, somebody's been there and videoed themselves walking around or horse riding or paragliding or anything that you can think of is represented on YouTube. And you're free to use those videos on, uh, that are on YouTube in your website. You just click the share button underneath the video and it gives you a URL. Uh, and you can insert that into the post. Okay. So, you know, if anybody wants to know more, they're very, very welcome to get in touch with me and I'll uh, help them all I can. That's, that's excellent, Alan. And I know how hugely helpful you are. So I will put, be putting links to Vacation Soup, to you personally, on the um, on the show notes so that people can go there and and take a look now i'm guessing you know it, it sort of doesn't need to be said that except i'm going to say it that you've got to have a website yeah um if you haven't if you haven't got a website then you're building your business on other people's land and these landowners can't be trusted it's the best way that i can put that um you have a summit and more and more people are going to these summits uh, year on year. That's the same for the ones in Europe, the same for the VRMA. When everybody was happy, when you just listed and they did come, these summits didn't exist. There was no need for them. Uh, but people have caught a cold very badly. Uh, in fact, I've got a client, I won't say where she is, but uh, I've got a client who's got two properties, and last year she had 60 bookings through Home Bay. And this year... She had none. Now, she hadn't changed anything she did. The photographs were the same. Uh, the prices were the same, et cetera, et cetera. But she went from 60 to none. And you know, I implore people to think about what would happen if that happened to you. Because that can happen to you. If you don't have your own website and you're not working towards a future of being independent, or not even independent, but at least not solely dependent, something that would supplement your, your business if that channel or those channels dried up because that can happen and has happened to a lot of people so yes you absolutely need a website uh, as I say uh, we're giving away free websites for people that don't make them we create them as well for a fee uh, but the, the majority of people and over 500 people have created sites through the free videos now uh, and most of those never contact me they just watch the videos and make their website. Um, I'm more than happy to help if people get stuck, of course. Um, but it's not that difficult. Of course, once again, it does take a bit of time. There are other options. There are plenty of template uh, sites, like um, Logify, Rentivo, uh, MyVR, etc., you know, where you can make, you know, even with Wix and Weebly, quite simple to make drag-and-drop websites. But 
Don't just make a website and leave it. That is not enough. In fact, that's uh, almost as bad as not having a site as, at all. Mm-hmm. You need uh, to keep your site live and give it a heartbeat with um, a regular stream of content. I mean, it needs to be better than your competition. And, you know, if you haven't got a website, then search on Google and look at the properties around you as the incentive because some people around you will be doing this already. Some people have already got a long way down that road. Mm-hmm. Um, and it will be the only way to go. Yeah, but, uh, at the moment, there are 5 million listings on Airbnb and 5 million listings on VR listings on Booking.com. So just by default, those numbers aren't going to go down. It's going to get harder. It's a numbers game. And if you haven't got your own chips on the table, you are very vulnerable. So you've made some really good points uh, in in favour of getting a website. And I think for those of you who are listening out there, if you haven't got one now, now is the time. Now is the time to do it. It's quite a, a I mean, for the for most people, it's a slower time of year. It's, I mean, certainly it is for us, October, November, December, pretty, you know, not not slow, but but a more gentler time of year when you've got a li- little more space available in your head to, <laughs> to, to do these things. So I really suggest that you get on and do it. And, and as Alan said, he's out there. If, uh, if you've got some questions, just go directly to him and, and ask them. And, and I can vouch for the fact that Alan will respond and, and be extremely helpful to you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I do try to be, that's for sure. Uh, and, you know, so if anybody's interested in the website, if they haven't got one, they can just go to vacationsoup.com and go to the owners area. And there's a section there that says get a free website. And you can see, I don't know, 20 or 30 examples that are made by people just like you uh, that haven't made a site before. You can see what they've created. You can see their comments that, you know, much easier than they thought. And in fact, it, more importantly, was very rewarding. And now they feel in control of their business, which is the whole purpose. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm going to put uh, links to everything we've talked about. I'll be putting links to um, to Vacation Soup, to some of, some of the owners we've been talking about um, who have terrific websites and who are really making great strides in branding through using Vacation Soup. So, Alan, it's as as ever. It's been a huge pleasure talking with you. It's been a long time since we we did face to face. I missed Como, and we haven't seen you across the channel for uh, well, we haven't seen you across the channel, the channel, <laughs> the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> it's the big channel. We haven't seen it's, you across the pond. So so maybe next year. Yes, you never know. Never say never. Never say never. Alan, thank you so much for joining me again. Oh, thank you, Heather. It's always a pleasure. Well, thank you, Alan Egan of Vacation Soup for joining me and sharing so much information. If you've been on the fence about getting your own website and about building a library of content for it, then I I think this last 50 minutes or so should have convinced you that it's something you just have to do. And I love Alan's idea of you know, just take 10 minutes or, or, or start off with the 20 minutes and just make a list of the 25 things that your guests can do in the area. That's all. Just do that. And then over a course of a couple of weeks, take each one and begin to expand on it. And they don't have to be long. And of course, the the information on keywords and keyword phrases, really, really useful. So make sure you head on over to the show notes and and have a look. And I make sure I get the link to keyword shitter because uh, that, that intrigued me. Okay, that's about it for this week. I'm actually working on my own website uh, over the weekend. And once I have that up and running, I am going to be registering with Vacation Soup and writing all my articles because I've noticed there is nothing. There's nothing in the soup in my area, in Muskoka. So I want to be the you know, front and center of that destination with information on, on my rental property. So watch this space. Just want to thank you once again for joining me. It's always a great pleasure to know that I have such a loyal following. People are out there listening to what we're talking about. 
as ever, if you've got any comments, please, uh, you know, you can email direct, me directly at heather at cottageblogger.com. You can write your comments at the end of the show notes. Always love to see that. And of course, for, from this particular episode, if you've got any questions uh, for Alan, you can uh, address him directly on the email that's on the show notes. So for now, thanks once again for listening. Always a pleasure to be with you, and I'll be talking with you again next week. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business. 